It's time for Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, good morning, everybody. JD here, Clayton, filling in for Steve Bakken, Talk of the Town, Super Talk 1270, Gun Day Monday. We got uh, our, our buddy Brandon's on the line, the sponsor of the show from Man Down Sporting Goods. You there, Brandon? I'm here. All right, morning, buddy. We got morning, Clayton Brandon. Doing remotely from from his uh, ranch down right on the border there, Morristown. How you doing this morning, Clayton? Sure. Doing good, guys. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to go out and finish up helping move yearlings when we're done here. And yeah, just going to be a good day. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, we're going to talk to Brandon in this first hour and then however long he wants to stay with us. And then uh, top of the second hour from 10 to 1030, sounds like we're going to have on U.S. Senate candidate Rick Becker for 30 minutes. How's that sound, Clayton? Sound, sounds sounds like an interesting awesome. conversation, yeah. Awesome. Hey, you know what, though? We should open up, though. And, and of course, I, I always call this the most most important 27 words probably ever written. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed and i tell you what there isn't anything more truer today uh right now as, as to what's happening so i always like yeah. to start that out with our second amendment perfect perfect love hearing it all right so brandon um you got anything interesting you want to talk about right away or should we just start hitting on some topics you got anything new in the story you want to talk about um, um nothing nothing too much no, everything's been pretty slow for me here. A little bit, few different numbers of twenty-two shells, but other than that, do you have any? Let me just let you guys talk. Do you have any of those? Uh, <clears throat> I can't remember if it was Sig or or uh, what's that uh, German handgun company? They got the one of them too. It's a twenty-two Magnum pistol they got now. It carries like seventeen rounds. You don't have one of them on hand in there, do you? Well. I Caltech does a 17 round. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, little, I know Caltech has that one. 17. Okay, somebody else just came out with what's 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 the German handgun? Walther, I thought it was well, either Sig, them or Sig. Well, Sig Sauer does one too, and they're 322. Okay, but yeah, I'm talking a 22 Magnum. I just saw it in a magazine or a, or an internet advertisement or something. They look 22 Magnum. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah. unless yeah. that's something Sig's got that's new that I just have never got offered. Yeah, it was something. It was something pretty new, but I'll check it out one of these breaks here. But I, I got a question for you right off the bat here concerning um, nine millimeter PCCs. Yeah. So my buddy actually won one here at the uh, Friends NRA banquet in 2019. It was that CMMG Banshee, the nine millimeter with a 10 inch yeah. barrel. And it's got this, it's got a stock on it. It's called a pistol brace stabilizer from Shockwave Technologies. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have the Velcro on it. And on their website, they say it's perfectly legal to shoulder this thing and do not put uh, an arm brace strap around it. Um, do you know anything about this? It's eight inch. You know, I, know there, I know there's companies that try to get away with the regulations as far as what they say, what ATF is saying is legal mm -hmm. and what they're saying is not legal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't just don't know. I, to me, I don't understand how it makes any sense that by just putting a strap around it, then it would make it illegal. You know what I mean? I, I I don't know the exact 100% law on that. I mean, now when he bought that gun, was it classified a rifle or was it classified a pistol? No, it was. That's my biggest terminology on it. Would be if it was a rifle or a pistol. You know, he won it at the NRA banquet at the Eagles. It was it was actually the ATF raffle. I think it was the last year that I worked that I worked one of the banquets there, and he won it. And that was that was the thing that came on it. That 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 particular stock, that Shockwave. Do you, do you know if on the forty four seventy three they did it as a pistol? As far as like my book that it would have been in, or whoever's book it would have been in that would have done the banquet. Okay. If it was classified rifle or pistol, you know, because Eric, my guy, works for me, just put together a little a Glock pistol that he put a put a, well, I'll call it a stock brace, whatever. I mean, he just put a brace on that, but that's a pistol, so that then it really don't matter. You know, I got a ten millimeter one of them cmmg banshees here in the store that that's got a you know a brace on it or stock whatever you want to call it but that's see when i log that into my book i logged that in as a pistol then because that's the way it came from cmmg you know i think where the confusion turns in is when you actually take a, a standard rifle ar Mm -hmm. And then start putting some of that stock and stuff on it and shortening the barrel is where that's where the 
that's where the that's where the conflicts at. I think. Okay, but yeah, I mean that's that's exactly the way it was. Now that's a that's considered a pistol. That's got a brace right on it. Yeah, well, this thing's got an eight-inch barrel, and it's on their website yet, is in their in their PCC, so pistol caliber carbine. I don't, you yeah, know, sure. Every, everything would depend on how the forty-four seventy-three was filled out, wouldn't it, Brandon? This, this ten millimeter I'm looking at here on my sh- shelf right now from CMMG, mm-hmm. that's got the strap on it. Yeah, they all do it's now. It's collapsible I mean, stock. Yeah, I mean, on their website, they're all. The, the nine millimeters and the 10 millimeters, they all have that arm brace, but this thing is, it's actually a, it's actually a stock. And I, I tried to call, <laughs> I tried to call ATF. I tried to call Fargo. I tried to call St. Paul. Good luck. The, yeah. They, <laughs> they obviously don't work. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. We heard you, Clay. We, Clay's oh, doing okay. remote here. So yeah, we heard you, buddy. You're coming in loud and clear. Well, it dropped yeah, off here. That's I why I was wondering. On my side, but I, oh, you can't. Brandon can't, said he can't hear you, I guess, Clayton. Oh, okay. Well, like I said, the only thing I know on the, on that stuff is it's oh, how go. how the gun was actually brought into the FFL dealer, and then it, whether it was classified as a pistol or a long gun, that'll make the difference in when they do the paperwork. Yeah, that's and what I kind of thought too, Clayton. Yeah, Brandon you know, did you know. mention that, Clayton. So I I got a I got a text message here for you, Brandon, from somebody. It says, "Ask Brandon about his outlook for popular deer rounds this year. Better than last year, or plan ahead and find them now." <laughs> That's for my buddy no, Derek. I would, say, I would say plan ahead, plan now. <laughs> I mean, it was last week, beginning of last week. I don't know how many boxes. The first couple of days we were open Monday and Tuesday, we sold the two forty three because youth season's just right around the corner. Oh, you yeah. know, youth season yeah. starts up oh, here yeah. in a couple of weeks. I think. Yep. Next yeah. week. I think it's yeah. I think it's so, two weeks from Friday or something. As a matter of fact. So. You know the the and the and the horrible thing is, I mean, the supply I got now is a little bit of two forty three. I do have a little bit of twenty five odd six, but the chances of that being the same two forty three shell or twenty five odd six shell that you guys have been shooting years past is mm-hmm. is is almost impossible. So what you're going to have to do if you decide to buy some off my shelf is probably you know go down to the range and and fire a box or two off, just getting the sighted back in, you know. So yeah, oh I would yeah, definitely not wait till the last minute. No, no, I yeah, I always like to, uh, I always like to buy as much as I can. What what I find is accurate because not only just sighting in, I I think people should go out and at least at least shoot to three hundred yards because, yep, you know if even if a lot of people don't feel comfortable at that range, I'm telling you, if you got a buck tag and there's a big buck out there at three hundred, you're probably gonna lob one. So you better you better be proficient at three hundred yards, in my opinion. I, and just to be safe, you know. But, I understand. Oh yeah. But uh, so we were talking about the ATF here. Um, I see our buddy Dave Chipman finally came out and, and told everybody. Remember, he couldn't tell anybody what an assault weapon was. <laughs> so he yeah. Chipman comes out, and you know, he Chipman says the AR-15 and AK-47 are identical, identical to military weapons, except for the full auto function. And he oh. says the rifle, this rifle, explosive like wounds in the body. So first of all, Chipman, bolt action rifles are exactly like military rifles too. I got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and revolvers and lever actions and muzzles. So yeah, it's other than and this guy. I mean, he couldn't he couldn't say it before, but now he can. And then he leaves this. It's sort of narrative with this explosive round thing with these guys. Well, I mean- the it's other a cold thing word. you gotta remember is if you look at it like the way I look at it, you know, we're talking semi-auto like an AK-47 or AR-15. It takes a lot of that, a lot of that power behind that bullet to cycle that action every time that round goes. Through. Yeah, they are uh, a, a bolt. A bolt action gun is what they call a closed breech. So you don't have no blowback trying to cycle a bolt. You got nothing. You got it all going out the end of the barrel. So if, if I had to guess which one was more deadly, which one would have more penetrating power? hands down the bolt action yeah because it's not cycling your it's not cycling your bolt every time to load another shell and whatever else so <laughs> i've, I've taken uh, through the chronograph an ar-15 and and a uh and a bolt action you're right the, the gas bleeds off on the semi-auto it's actually a slower less lethal bullet than it is out of a bolt action with the same caliber yep. you're 100 <laughs> right, right? Yep. so so yeah 
that uh, I got a kick out of that once, but he, you know, he finally figured out, and, and of course the explosive, but he didn't say that about, about any hunting quote hunting rounds. So, well, you know, that, it's those big, bad weapons of war, you know, the code words, explosive yeah. rounds, weapons of war. I'd have a lot more respect style. for them if, if they would just say, you know, we just want to ban them because we don't, they, they look scary. We don't like that. I, I mean, I'd have a lot <laughs> more respect. Yeah. You know. That's what they believe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, because as I'm sure they're eggheads and we always talk about what a weapon of war is. They, 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 they don't even, they have, probably don't even have a clue that bolt action. They don't probably even know nothing about World War II or World War One or any other war. I'm they sure they don't know Jesus, anything really, about the 30 if I'd really want to scare him, then he should come in my store right now. I got thrifty, or three fifty Barrett BMGs. <laughs> with oh the, boy, uh, M107, so it's the semi-autos. Plus, I got they all three of my customers bought silencers for him. Really? Oh, wow. Was, was a silencer run for a fifty Barrett? Uh, about twenty six hundred, twenty five hundred, twenty six hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. So the only one that I know that's doing it is Barrett. So you're buying Barrett silencer for it too, you know. So. If- if you actually, shoot I thought it, that would be worse than it is. Yeah, so I did good. too, actually. So can you do it without ear protection yet, or does it still hurt your ears? You know, <laughs> uh, I've got two guys that are coming in doing paperwork today, and the other guy we're waiting on paperwork. So I, I me mean, personally, even with, you know, COVID shutting everything down and dealer shows, they, they used to have like a range night every dealer show I go to in January and stuff. And yeah. it was, if it was outside, if we were down in Texas, we'd just go to the outdoor range. If we're in Minneapolis, you'd just go right, you know, they got an indoor range not far from the hotel where we stayed at. But I, I, me personally, I have never had the opportunity to shoot one suppressed. You need to do I'm that and give us a report. Yes, that we probably still need hearing protection, though, I'm guessing. I would think so, <laughs> I but bet. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm curious. Still. I'd have to go without once just to see. I mean, I'll stand back, <laughs> boys. But... <laughs> right. I mean, I wouldn't. No. I mean, they take away a lot of recoil too, and the fifty's got a lot. So I'd be curious to see how much recoil it took off of it too. Sure. You, you right. have any of the uh, single shot fifties in in stock too, Brandon? That I don't. No, okay. no. I kind of just kind of had to run a couple. Like I said, two three customers that wanted these M one o sevens, and it's taken me two years to get them for them. But I mean, they finally, obviously, Barrett must have decided to make a batch and get it to distribution because here in the last last five in the last two months now i got the three here that i got in the store which okay. are already all sold so but i mean uh, right. the one guy that i got up his up front he, he's nice enough just to kind of let me display it so i got it up by the front window there by <laughs> where joe always sits you know so we're coming up on our first break here guys brandon can you stick around or you got to go buddy or what do you what do you want to do no we'd be happy no, to keep no, you around good, good deal all right. all right okay sounds good yeah. well We'll take the first break here and come back and continue our conversation with Brown and Clayton. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Mandan Sporting Goods, Dvorak Motors, where your family for a lifetime. Big boy, just get in line. It moves fast. Hit Inc. Independence, dignity, respect. Hit Inc. Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, all right, we're back with Brandon from Mandan Sporting Goods, the sponsor of Gun Day Monday. Appreciate that, Brandon. We're going to keep sure. talking some guns. We got Clayton coming in remotely from his ranch here down in Morristown, North Dakota. I'm mean, somewhere in Morristown, South Dakota, but he's right on the other yeah. side of the How far are you from the border? Anyways, Clayton, about 100 yards. About 100 yards, yeah. South Dakota cowboy. <laughs> so oh, yeah, South Dakota cowboy. You remember that on Scott Show? <laughs> <laughs> coming up in ah, that was a good one i'll get a kick out of that i get a kick out of that so I was, we were talking i got some more atf stuff here for you uh, one of these atf agents here this guy brandon garcia he's been a career atf agent and then he had this big letter when he he resigned that that uh the politicization of of the atf is more than he could take anymore you know they talk about um, diversity and openness in the ATF, but he said, but if you don't have their liberal opinion, you know, you're kind of getting harassed and, and they're directing them to, you know, to harass gun dealers and gun shops. And he said, that's not what, it, you know, he signed up for. And it's unfortunate, you know, I think the ATF should actually work with gun shops instead of harassing them. But, you know, and he well, said the last thing. The relationship. Yeah, go ahead. What's that, Clayton? 
Well, as a, that should be the relationship. The, uh, the ATF should should be working with them, you know, as a legal form of business rather than harassing them all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, Brandon, if you ever do you get it. You shouldn't a- have to be scared of them. I mean, that's the problem. Now it's right. like, yeah, you, you don't know ever. The problem is, too, you know, the, you, I'm not, we never really ever talked about this either, but, you know, you can get audited at any time. Yeah. They anytime. don't give you and say on the 23rd of August, which will be tomorrow, we're going to show up between one to four or whatever. It's just, you wake up on Monday morning and this is the way it was. And it seemed like back in the day when they were coming around and harassing me quite a bit, it, it was almost to the year, to the month. It was always in, in April, like first, hmm. second week of April. And then it was like three, four years in a row. Really? And it was like, it was, must have just been my time, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, so got the, you guys the problem are... I have with it now is, yeah, first of all, try to call them and get a hold of somebody. You yeah. can't. Yeah, I'm trying to but figure out the this, law. You, you know, been, been doing this now for 14 years, so I pretty much either self-taught myself or phoned a friend that maybe would have a gun shop somewhere else or whatever because the mm-hmm. chances of you trying to get a straight, honest answer from the ATF, I deal with the, with the silencer side of it yet here now, and just try to get a straight answer out of them for – for for anything i mean it's just a you, you could look at the answer they provide you and you could take it four different ways and it's like well what way do i take it you know yeah, everything's so right. wishy-washy you know and that's like you say then you're scared you're scared of it because you don't you know you want to be you want you want to be law-abiding and and follow the rules but yeah you know you don't know if you're breaking them which is ridiculous and i don't it's almost like they want it like that you know well that's what it is it's, well, it's by design I mean, this, is, this is still my business too i mean yeah. They come in and they start start throwing me around and say, "Oh, you did this wrong, and you're do you've been doing this wrong, and you can't do this." And then they say, "Well, they pull your license." Well, shit. Yeah. Well, then what do I got? <laughs> that makes you mad. I I'm laughing because you threw an S bomb out there. Let it slip. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> so Clay yeah, and I, 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 I hey, hey, Jamie took offense, but I'm sure they've I, all heard that word before. Yeah, anyway, for sure. So. For sure. <laughs> what was uh, what was that, Clayton? Well, and see that, and that's what this is. It's by it's by design. If they leave things undefined, you know, like like you're talking about, and they come in, well, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, and they don't give you answers. It might be little infractions. Well, you get an administration like we got currently, and and it's not just this administration. You have ingrained bureaucrats within the ATF that have been there for decades, mm-hmm. and they answer to nobody. They're unelected, so they have made their own little, I guess shadow government in a way you could call it and if you got anti-gunners in there which i'm sure there is that's oh, what yeah. they're going to employ they're, they're going to go in there and they're going to come oh you didn't dot this i or cross that t but then they go out publicly and they talk about how ffl dealers don't follow the rules we got so many percent we had this shut down this year because of infractions when transferring firearms well that wasn't exactly true but that makes a great headline mm-hmm. and it uh, you sure. know and then it they take their narrative and, and push it. And that's, yeah, uh, I can tell you what, if, if uh, somebody gets in there in 2024 that I think is going to, I hope he cleans house deep in all of those agencies. As much as he can. Anybody, let's just say Trump for the sake of it being Trump, if he gets elected, <clears throat> he should just fire anybody who's been in there a long time that he can. You know, I agree. I've, I've been saying that. Uh, any 20, 30 year old people, you know, uh, you're, employees that have been ingrained in there your history start yeah. over well, i mean you know, go ahead you know, the other thing you got to look at too is you know as far as etf versus fbi versus you know and i didn't realize this right away when until i first started and now i'm really kind of seeing into it just in talking to you guys and everything else you know if you really want to think about the, the 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 branch of the etf compared to the fbi we wouldn't need the atf New. The FBI is there New. all the time anyway. And anytime there's anything concerning or whatever, well, then the ATF calls in the FBI. And yep. it's, yep. it's a it's a, it's a a company that really would, it's, it's a double company that really they don't, they don't have no, no, I mean, yeah, they can close down gun shops, I guess. But, mm-hmm. you know, then the FBI is probably involved with that too. So why do we have two of the exact same entities for? Right. Well, I agree. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's not the same thing, actually, but it's, I don't get that either. You know, it's, it's just too bad that these people just can't do their job without, you know, I mean, obviously politics will drive your decisions the way you think a little bit, but I mean, for God's sake, you can't, 
you know, you hire somebody in the ATF and, and in their mind, people like Brandon and other gun shop and FFL guys are, are like, you know, they're thugs because they're, they're, they're selling a perfectly legal product that we have a right to own. It, um, I mean, that sucks. I, I, I hate that. Well, and the crazy thing is that one of my, one of my distribution centers here has been about a month ago now. I haven't talked to you guys in over a month or whatever, but they sent a memo out with one of the last guns I got from them. They offered me something I had pre-sold, whatever mm -hmm. customer wanted. So when we opened the box up, we opened the box up and here's this, I mean, it was a printed laminated, I won't say it's just like a letter that was on a piece of paper. I mean, it's something they wanted to hang up and it was right from Davidson. So that's like online. You can go on their gallery guns and buy guns. NRA gets a lot of their guns from Davidson's, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, um, but, but that letter basically stated, they said, you guys better go through and start cleaning up your books. Cause they said that they're on a zero tolerance now. So basically what the letter said, and it was front and back, full size page. You read through everything that they recommended because they said right now you get audited and you get that one I that doesn't have a dot on top of it or the T that doesn't have a cross. He goes, they're, they're pulling your license Unbelievable. You know, over just, just one simple deal like that. Yeah. And that was coming right from distribution center. But you can go play uh, the knockout game on 10 old ladies and they let you out of jail and nothing happens to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're at the bottom of the hour break here, guys. Brandon, you hanging around again, buddy? Sure. I'll hang around a little more. Awesome. I got Appreciate it. Going on. Okay. All right. We'll see you. <laughs> we'll talk to you after the break. You're talking Brown Down, Mound Down Sporting Goods, sponsor of Gun Day Monday here at Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us. JD here. We got still got Brandon on from Man Down Sporting Goods. He's a sponsor of the Gun Day Monday show. Everybody appreciate that. Go give Brandon some support. And we got Clay Peterson coming to us down from Morristown on his ranch. How you guys, you guys still there? I'm still oh. here. Awesome. Awesome. So on the break here, um, I was looking at some stuff I had. Um, <clears throat> According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, there were some 5 million first-time gun buyers in 2020. And it also says, what, what is also notable is that in the months that have followed, many of those individuals have become repeat customers with nearly 23% of the retailers reporting that those new owners made a second firearm purchase. So that's bad news for the anti-gunners right there. You got just about a quarter of them going out and buying themselves another firearm, which I love it. I love that. Good news for freedom and, and sending more freedom seeds out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is for sure. For sure. So Brandon, do me a favor. If, if the ATF agent ever does come in or you ask him about that PCC shockwave sh stock. Yeah, I will. Sure. Cause you probably talked to him before they ever call me back. I think I left them all a message, but they're probably like, who's this little peon, you know? Yeah, they don't even answer me back to the emails even. I can email them. Like, some of that stuff with the silencers I'm doing now, the e-forms. And there was a, a customer of mine that got sick and had to cancel a lot of uh, paperwork we had submitted on, on them in, in April. Mm -hmm. um, she come in over a month ago. And basically what I did is I just, had to, I just wanted them to withdraw the paperwork. Not that the thing came back approved because she couldn't have it she had some medical issues she had to go get that taken care of and whatever and basically she needed the money just to get back and forth to a doctor's appointment mm -hmm. but you can't just call them and say okay let's just cancel this so you have to actually put an email in and then they put in a withdrawal letter saying that you're going to withdraw this application shit that took over a month yeah i it's... never did get the withdrawal letter back before I ever gave her, gave the money back on the silencer that, that they bought from me. I mean, it's like it really, the way this is supposed to automate this whole process. Mm -hmm. And now you're not trying to call people on the phone because like what just happened with you, Jamie, and you try to call and nobody answers and you're leaving messages. Well, this is an email now. So you're telling me they don't look at an email for over a month? Yeah, that's unbelievable. I mean, that's... The scary thing is, granted, for as slow as, as these... Uh, these e-filings, the, the whole theory as far as the three months, well, everybody knew that was a lie. But, I mean, if, if they would have waited any longer, like another month, mm -hmm. that thing would have come back approved then. Then we'd had a total mess because oh it would have been in the person's name that I had already refunded the money out. And, uh, I just, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I, I understand what you're dealing with, and you have to. I've been doing this 14 years now. It's Ooh. just it's 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 just craziness what they just don't take a priority on. Yeah, and I mean me, it's just a question I have to clarify something for somebody. But you, I mean, it's your business and your livelihood on the line, so that's that, that makes it even more ridiculous in my opinion. But oh yeah, I'm I got it. You, you have any uh, 17 HMR rifles in there? Rifles? Let me look here. <laughs> I'm just curious because um, well, you're I gearing have up one. for the prairie dog shoot, ain't you, Jamie? <laughs> well, I was thinking about <laughs> trading that baby in on something else. There we go. <laughs> uh, videos. I do have up. a Ruger Ruger Precision, couple Savages, couple three different Savages, and and 17 HMR. I got a Savage and a Mark II and a uh, 17 Mach II. Of course, don't have any ammo for that either, mm. but. I was just asking because uh, I do have a Ruger American at about 17. I mean, if things like brand new, I was going to see what kind of, if you would want to take that in on trade on anything, I was going to bring it over and see what you thought. I, I didn't know if you had any no use for it or what. Yeah, no, bring it in. We could see what we could do with it, sure. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Up, like I said, upgrade, ain't you? Getting, he's getting ready for a prairie dog shoot. He, he just hasn't told you that yet, Brandon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Big sure. one. Sure. Big one. And then, yeah, we actually do have one of my buddies i was out yesterday at axel's place and he, he actually does have a drone so we are going to try to get some drone footage when we do that for the <laughs> for guns in the 701 show so that should yeah, be pretty right. sweet we're getting on a town it's about oh i, I suppose there's 600 acres there give or take mm. and it hasn't really it hasn't even been shot on much so this ought to be fun <laughs> love it yeah that should be that should be awesome we're going to video it and and uh we'll have a lot of good commentary on there too so Plus, one of the guys that's going with us, South Dakota Archery is open, and uh, that's where we're going to be is in South Dakota, just across the border. So he's going to try to uh, try to get an antelope while we're there. So who knows? We might get some good awesome. footage out of that. Awesome. That would be awesome. So what what is a, what is a uh, varmint permit down there cost anymore, Clay? I don't know. I haven't looked for a while. It used to be about 15 20 bucks, but I suppose they had to go raise it. Who knows? But I, I know it won't be more than 30 for a non-resident. Yeah, I want to we, see the And we time. will be legal, I guess. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. You guys don't have the magazine limits down there, do you? Not that I'm aware of. I think it's just <laughs> get her done. <laughs> we better not really know them. Yeah, no uh, kidding. <laughs> I think on the res, actually, on, on Standing Rock, it was uh, on on tribal land, I think it was like five-round limit. I'm not sure if that was for varmints, but but if you deer hunted down there, it was four or five, I think, because I remember when, I, when really? I hunted down there, I had to have a different mag for my AR with a block in it for about four rounds or whatever. Was you on tribal That's land? Good. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. See, if you're not on actual tribal land, not you know that's where everyone gets confused. The the reservation right. is the reservation, but if you're on right. deed and land, you you just follow the state yeah. rules. Yeah, 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 for sure. Which I'm not. I mean, I was bringing my thirty or twenty. Well, I usually use twenty rounders actually when I shoot prey dogs because the thirty rounder when you drop the bipod, it kind of gets in the way a lot of times if the ground isn't totally flat. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I do I do prone out all the time when I you know I'm still I don't a lot of guys bring the tables out there and all this and that but not I I don't I prone out tables are sweet though you know I don't uh, my, yeah I, you know when we go out like I was, we talked about this a while ago and I know it kind of shocks people when I tell them that we actually try to sneak in either along fence lines or tree lines onto mm -hmm. a prairie dog town and we can sit in that spot and shoot for hours it, yep. it's it's when they see you. They hear the shot, but even with a suppressor, it ain't that bad. They just, it's seeing a person or seeing something out of place. That's what makes them go down. So, yeah, it's a, I really do highly recommend it to actually kind of truly hunt them and, and sneak in there. Well, even when I was down there with you before, I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but we didn't even have suppressors on. And heck, no. we laid there, Greg's place in the trees. And yeah, I mean, shot all day. They were away and they weren't going. Only the, only, the only way they were going down is when we hit them with, with some freedom seeds. So, <laughs> was, yeah, that's right. Hey, I, I mean, I, a lot I, of people don't really realize that sneaking in like that on them. That's a good idea. Non resident predator varmint is 40 bucks now. So they, they, they went okay. up. So, that's, but two that's, gallons, <laughs> that's two gallons of gas. That's two gallons of gas. Have you done any prey dog shooting, Brandon, this, this summer at all? I have not. I've sent a few people down 
you know, down south to where I know people let people on and whatnot. There was a couple guys back from Wisconsin. Didn't see my whole group of Minnesota boys that normally come through, but uh, mm-hmm. there's been some people around. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't actually. I don't. I think the last time I went was probably in April or something. Hmm. Dougie and I went down, down so. Oh no, yeah, we tried to go in in May, I think, down in it. And it ended up snowing on us when we went down. So we didn't even, I don't even think we, we got one furry dog. It was pretty ridiculous. But you know, yeah, usually I found this. Go ahead, I'll go out in December on a really nice day. You, know, you get a, mm-hmm. a really nice sunny day. Them dogs come up out of them holes. That's the best time to go because they haven't been shot at for, for quite a while. And I have mm-hmm. a blast actually going out there in the middle of December if it ain't too cold out and the sun is shining. Them dogs will be all over and they don't expect it, I guess. Um, I mean, we've gotten a lot. Oh, we lost Clayton there. He got zapped on. So we got zapped on on the border. So just me and you here, Brandon. Uh, so I was going to hey, ask hey. you, too. You got, I know you got Tannerite over there. Do you have the, I thought I saw you had someone last time I was in it, but I was kind of in a hurry. The the orange stuff, Sonic Boom, I think. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, think I, got, I think I got them both, you do, actually. You but... do? Does, t- does Tannerite come with their own mixing containers like the Sonic Boom does? It does. It yep. does now? Okay. Because yep. I know it never used to. You used to have to mix it. Yeah, I mean, it had one, but the Sonic Boom actually comes with its own one-pound deals there. So, yeah, I, which I think yep. they work good. And a lot of people think it like it gets old. The But, I mean, I've had some up at the farm for over two years, and, and, I, and I just mixed some up and blasted it, and it was just as loud and effective as it ever was. So if anybody's ever wondered as long as that. everything every kind of like it's got to just kind of take it like gunpowder you know as long as it's sealed you should be good to go you know yeah yep yep for sure for sure yeah hey, uh, can to... you hear me jamie yeah, we got you back now clayton all right we're tell back you what, on again. Guys, we got about five seconds here we're gonna come up on the break so brandon i think we'll let you go and um sure. and uh it was fun talking to you buddy appreciate yeah. you appreciate man down sporting goods you know sponsoring the show and get over there and help this guy out you got to support the people that are that are supporting our rights, and Brown is definitely one of them guys. Absolutely. So, Sounds very good. Yep. We'll talk to you later, Brown, and thanks, buddy. Clay and I will be back Brandon. in a few minutes here, I guess. Hey. All right. We going to break here, Randy? Here we go. All right. Here we- <laughs> talk to you guys on the other side of the break here. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Mandan Sporting Goods, Dvorak Motors, where your family for a lifetime. Big boy, just get in line. It moves fast. Hit Inc. Independence, dignity, respect. Hit Inc. Talk of the town on Super Talk 1270. All right, welcome back, everybody. Brandon, Brandon Sporting Goods, sponsor of the show. He's we, we let him go after the break there. We cut him loose, and we got Clayton. We still got you down there in Morristown, though, right north of Morristown. We're still here, and uh, now I can see you live again, too. Yeah, okay, good. We got you. How far <laughs> north of the border you say your ranch is there? Well, it starts about 100 yards into North Dakota, yeah. and then uh, we go four miles north, and well, then we go east and west. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's all yep. in North Dakota, though. The good thing, I'd hate to have those uh, South Dakota extortion taxes on property like uh, they're at their rates, so it's a little better up here. <laughs> yeah extortion tax i like that <laughs> all right so we're gonna we're gonna do uh we're gonna we're gonna bust out the old happy ending story of the week here for everybody all right how's that sound clayton these are all the sounds like I a enjoy. great way to, to to end this top of the hour yeah. here okay so i'll kind okay, i'll try i'll try and read this smooth as i can but okay a mother of two in milwaukee wisconsin says she was forced to shoot and kill an intruder on monday morning after he broke into her home while she and her children were inside the woman spoke with WTMJ in Milwaukee while requesting anonymity. Says she was in the shower when she heard her two kids, ages 14 and 12, start screaming. Which, if you're in the shower and you have kids, and if you heard them screaming, you're freaking out. <laughs> so, without hesitation, she raced to her bedroom, grabbed her gun, and ran into the hallway to face down the intruder. It all happened so fast, an adrenaline rush, she said. The man, she said, was already being attacked by her two pit bulls. But she shot him multiple times because, quote, he wouldn't stop coming. The neighbors <laughs> called her a hero. The mother said the intruder appeared to be in the late 30s and was acting erratically. Milwaukee police have not identified the man. They arrested the woman but released her several hours after questioning, which they should have because if somebody breaks into your house and they're 
and your kids are freaking out and the dogs are attacking them i'm hey he needs freedom seeds so yeah, good on that yeah. woman happy ending part is her and her children are safe and the scumbags resume the uh, room temperature i guess if you want to say it that way <laughs> yeah, absolutely that's that's where he belongs <laughs> right right <laughs> kind of reminds me of the old rush limbaugh show he has assumed room temperature <laughs> yeah yep it was great it was great so what i'm let's do, i'm gonna go at this right before we got a couple minutes here yet for the top of the hour but we got louisiana gop comes out formally in support of the nra what do you think of that clayton well i think that's outstanding um you know the gop you know across the country they they keep having it in their mm-hmm. platforms that they're second amendment supporters and they, they, with the true intent of the, with how it was written, uh, North Dakota has it written right into our state constitution. So to me, there's absolutely no reason that the, a state GOP party shouldn't have that place and, and maybe even call out NRA themselves like they did that they do support the NRA along with the second amendment. Cause they are two separate issues, NRA. And we've had this discussion before. Without them, we would have been lost a long time ago. Right, and and it was a, it was unanimously passed by the by the, yes. by the Louisiana GOP. So, it, uh, you know uh, what's sad is, I'm not sure we could get a unanimous vote like that in yeah, kind of what GOP I was at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I, and and guess what? Yeah, does the NRA have a few issues? They sure do, but like them or not, they're they're still uh, they're still the heavyweights. I mean, yes, they are. They're they're the and, big and, dog on the block, especially yeah, in and, and they're constantly triggering the left when when gun <laughs> stuff happens. Or I mean, which we got a bunch of stuff we can talk about at break. But <clears throat> yeah, when, when when gun stuff happens, the first thing they point at is is the big bad NRA. So oh yeah, they blame know. the NRA for everything. You know, they never mention Gun Owners of America or National Su- Shooting Sports Foundation. They don't mention mm-hmm. all the other gun rights groups or gun activist groups. It's always the NRA, so they must be doing something right because they, when you get blamed for everything, that means you're probably doing it right. Well, my district has a, a corn feed coming up here. My d- district 35 oh. Republicans, and if, if your man Perry's there, maybe I'll have to talk to him about it and see what. There he you says. go. Go, go talk I know to I'm going to talk to my representatives about it, and and um, you know we got good young guy running running in our. Actually, I'm going to talk to talk to Sean and see if we can get him on the guns in the 701 here coming up. Yeah, this, I think that's he's a running great against. Idea. Yeah, he's running against a real commie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Potter. So oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, the last rating that guy ever got from the NRA was a D minus. So you, <laughs> ah, so that tells you everything you need to know, really. Yeah. Yeah, if you get it, yeah, and then a lot of people think the NRA is not real hardcore, and, and if and those people that think that, if, if this guy got a D minus, all right. Well, we got the music starting up here, Clay. We got hard break coming up, and after the top of the hour, we're gonna have uh, speaking of politics, we're gonna have U.S. Senate candidate Rick Becker coming on the show for sounds for good thirty minutes. So we're gonna we're gonna talk some guns with him and some other related topics. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we'll see you uh, after the top of the break. Thanks for listening. Super Talk 1270. Talk of the Town. Weekday morning starting at 9 on Super Talk 1270. And the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. (laughs) Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in. Super Talk 1270, Gun Day Monday, Talk of the Town. Clayton, you there, buddy? Oh, we got Clayton on the remote there. I don't think he's got us yet. We got... uh, Oh, here. Try that. Okay, there we go. We got you now, buddy. We got you. Mr. Becker, you on the line? Even even I'm up sometimes. I had to actually put my mic back on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the line. I'm here. Awesome. Ready to go. All right. So we got uh we got on the line special guest this morning. We got Rick Becker, US Senate candidate. Um kind of a last minute deal. Appreciate you coming on, Rick. How you doing this morning? I'm doing real well. Happy to be on. Happy to, you know, let people know who I am and that they uh will hopefully have a, a another choice in the election for Senate. Awesome. So what why don't you give us a little background of why you're why you decided to get back into the race here? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a state legislator from Bismarck, have been for 10 years. I'm retiring this year. So um, kind of was, was, was called.
calling her quits for the state. But I did run um, at the state Republican Party convention for Senate. And um, what I found was that there, when I was campaigning for that throughout the state, that there was a really large appetite for changing how we're doing things, you know, getting rid of the status quo. Yep. Uh, I mean, people, people are, are activated. And we narrowly lost the the campaign. Very new. All, all I needed to do was convert another 100 people, and uh, there was a record number of people there. So, you know, I left there saying, "Well, <clears throat> we gave it a go," and, um, and but we didn't quite get across the finish line. Since that time, though, really, I, I just I just have become increasingly concerned, increasingly agitated. You know, I hear I hear John Hoven talking about how we need to get rid of inflation, and it, it's just maddening because the number one reason we have inflation is because of the politicians spending money we don't have. That that really is the number one reason. Now, yep. Joe Biden and his energy Absolutely. policy, sure, that's a definite contributor, and uh, even Vladimir Putin with his war in Ukraine is a a lesser contributor. Uh, number one though is the spending, and that you know Senator Hoven is not either he doesn't understand that that's the major contributor or he's just pretending that that that's not an issue. So when he comes out and says we have to get rid of inflation, whatever that means, I don't know, and he's not owning his role in the inflation we have, that just tells me we're going to send the person back to Washington, D.C. to keep doing what he's been doing for the last 11 years, and that doesn't help North Dakota. It doesn't help America. So, exactly. you know, knowing that this is an uphill campaign, people telling me, my God, don't do it. You're going to your political career is over if this happens. And of course, my response is, well, I don't you know, we don't care about my political career. We care about doing the right thing. So yeah. uh, that's I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. Uh, we're getting signatures now. I've got to get a thousand signatures, valid signatures. So we know how that works. So I'm going to try and get two thousand signatures. Um, and, uh, if we get that and they're validated, then I get on the ballot. I've got, uh, basically just another week to get signatures. Where, where can people go to sign it? Well, um, I've got in Bismarck, I've got, uh, I've got a petition at my office at Becker Plastic Surgery, okay. but I'm going out and about to different towns, um, and meeting with people. Uh, we were just in the West half of the state over Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to be in the East half of the state. Uh, on uh, this coming Friday, Saturday, making many stops. And uh, there are people that have uh, asked me to send them the petitions. And it's because people can go around and get signatures if they want. And so I can I can email the form to anyone. Um, okay. It's 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 pretty easy. You know, okay. It's not uh, it's not like an initiated measure with uh, uh, notary <laughs> signatures and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, well, I'm my my regular job. I'm out. I do a lot of deliveries for the product we make. So I, I'm, I'll just swing in where it's into your office up there because I drive by quite a bit, and I'll I'll just swing in there and sign it. Then I'm more than happy to do oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. And I I see you got an event coming up on the 27th in uh, it looks like Valley City, Rick. Yeah, Valley City. So on the 27th, so I, I'm making these little loops. Uh, Saturday, for instance, I was in Beulah, Belfield, and Dickinson. Friday, I was in Watford City, Tioga, Williston, McGregor. Um, but yeah, on the 27th, I'll be in Valley City, Fargo, Grand Forks, and Devil's Lake. And uh, so the, the the events, I'll put events in quotes kind of because it, it's basically, you know, a casual thing. We find a spot. We let people know I'm going to be there. They can come and, and uh, sign the petition. And probably even more importantly, if they've got questions, you know, they can they can come out and ask. I, I, I really am open, even to challenging, you know, questions or something that people might think like, oh gosh, you know, you shouldn't ask them that, uh, anything at all. I'm, I'm an open book. So yeah, we'll, well be what, there. What a novel and, uh, idea, Rick. We'll, uh, we we'll appreciate that because most guys are not that, that open and accessible. And I know for a fact that you're very accessible. And I, I think that speaks volumes right there that uh, accessibility is a, is a huge thing. Big time. So it's, it is yeah. gun day Monday. So I'd like to say this about, about Rick. I mean, obviously he's got a lot of legislation passed and we'll, we'll talk about that. But, uh, so when the parkland massacre happened there years ago, 
I think it was uh, shortly after Steve was elected, Steve Bachman was elected mayor. We had a, and they came up here, you know, advocating for, for um, Second Amendment prohibition. And there was a few politicians that showed up at our pro-gun rally, and, and Rick was there. Rick actually spoke. Rick was there. Yeah, so I mean, if anybody's wondering about his Second Amendment bona fides, it doesn't get any it doesn't get any better than him, that's for sure. Um, Rick, why don't yeah, you, you I, know, uh, go ahead and say something? Well, I, I don't want to step on what you might be bringing up, but yeah, I'm. Uh, no, go for it. The, the, the bona fides are are there with the Second Amendment, and you guys know that. Yep. Um, yep. I I with with the red flag bill uh, that was in my committee and uh, that I sat on in in judiciary, uh, and I carried it on the floor so I could get it killed. And we did that successfully, which was a, a beautiful vote, by the way. The red flag bill, uh, you guys may know, got the, the vote was 17 to 76. Yep, I do and, remember that. That was awesome. I remember yeah. that. I was up there oh, when that cool. happened. <laughs> yep. And then uh, our constitutional carry we have in North Dakota, that was my bill uh, in, in 2017. And, uh, of course, we are a Second Amendment sanctuary state now. Uh, yep. Thanks to my bill in 2021 for the uh, Second Amendment Preservation uh, Act. Yeah. Uh, so these are all, you know, pretty solid things. And then, there, you know, there's always little stuff in the background too. Uh, I was I was instrumental in getting uh, an amendment on a bill killed that would have required um, people with with uh, medical marijuana um, licenses, I guess we'll say, uh, that they be reported to the attorney general's office so that the attorney general knows who uh, has medical marijuana and wants to purchase the gun so they can do a cross check. And I mean, there's all these little things. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, I, I can say without a doubt, I have been a, a fierce, fierce supporter of the second amendment. Yeah. We appreciate well, that more than and, you know. And I'll but... add to that. I can, t I can, I can attest to this being, uh, well, I worked for the NRA of course for 10 years but he has an A-plus rating. Rick has been a defender of the Second Amendment to the core, guys. Uh, I always hear the people, you know, you don't want no compromise. This is your guy. Rick Becker does not compromise on the Second Amendment. He's probably been the most successful legislator, as far as mm -hmm. I can tell, in the, in the North Dakota State Legislature to uphold and pass bills that become law that protect the Second Amendment. So, Rick, my hat's off to you. And, of course, I've testified on some of those bills and uh, – I'll do it gladly anytime. Yeah. Yeah, there was uh it was a few years back, I don't remember the details, but uh uh I think it was before I met you, Clay, but I there was a bill I uh that the NRA was supporting. There were several, but and I, I was strongly supporting all of them except one. And they couldn't figure it out. But uh it it was because there was uh there was a good part, but in a very subtle way there was a very bad part. So <laughs> So I, there was yeah. a bill that the NRA supported that I didn't support because it wasn't strongly Second Amendment enough. <laughs> awesome. Well, and, and that does happen, Rick. Um, and I, when I was a rep, I used to catch a lot of grief for that. Uh, I, I can't remember that bill either. I, I remember the bill because my phone rang off the hook <laughs> in my office. And I had to yeah. explain to people that even though I'm an NRA rep, I don't support the bill because, it yeah, I, and it was a horrible. You weren't getting any gain for what you were losing. And to me... There's no compromise to the Second Amendment. I, I don't have any wiggle room on my rights. Mm -hmm. Well, I can yep. tell you this: um, the guy that um, Rick's running against, he wasn't there. He he does have a good Second Amendment record, but at at the two A rally, I've been to a few of them, and I, I've never seen Senator Hoven there. But Rick, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. actually I think I saw you at a couple other ones we had too. I don't know if you spoke at them, but I know you spoke at the one by the by the Civic Center there, and. Um, you know, it's, I think it was you and Karen Carls and Steve, and I can't remember the guy from Minot. I think he's a senator now. Uh, um, did Ole? Yeah. I don't remember. Ole Larson. Yep, he yeah. was there. Those, those were the ones that were there represented. Those are, I remember that. But, yeah, so that, you know. That was, was a great, that was a great turnout, too, for such a short notice. So, yeah, yeah that it was. was. It was. It was. It was a good turnout. So, yeah. so um, you got any um, – Let's give a little background on you know you, when when you started owning guns, Rick. Have you grown up with them, or do you hunt? Or yeah, I I hunt. I mean, I've hunted my whole life. My you know, I mean, I've got the old the old school North Dakota background where you know my dad's taking me out and mm -hmm. not not even in double digits for age yet, and um, you know shooting a four ten and uh, <laughs> just just yeah, 
all hunting. But of course, as you guys know, um, not about that. <laughs> the hunting can certainly give one an appreciation for firearms. Well, it gives one an appreciation for so, for so much. But it's really not what the Second Amendment's about. Um, right. And and it certainly wasn't until I was well into adulthood uh, that I that I started to understand the importance of the Second Amendment and that it had nothing to do with hunting or sport shooting. Um, and even at this my very old age now, I'm only starting to learn about more about uh, about guns and like right now I'm trying to I'm looking for a good handgun. I've got I've got a little. A little one for conceal, mm-hmm. uh, I can put in my suit. But god oh, dang, I can't, I can't shoot crap with it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier than bigger one. For, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm looking at maybe. Uh, my wife's got a Walther, mm-hmm. and uh, that's real nice. So I might get, I might get one of those. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, you know, I'll give you a suggestion on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Rick, yeah. I'll give you a little, a little suggestion on yeah. that. Um, you got the. Uh, um, um, I can't remember his name up there, Jamie, up there just off Airport Road Defense Center, the Firearms Nick. Defense Center. Nick, stop in there, and I think he's got guns that you can rent or try. Go try several of those handguns on his range, and it'll help you see which one you like the best. That was always my my suggestion to everybody. Rather than asking me or somebody else, you don't know until you actually put them in your hand and shoot them, and you'll get a good feel for them, and then you can buy the right gun. That, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, I, I okay. would. Mu- you know, I'm going to take you up on that. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. and Nick's awesome was, in uh, there. I was looking at a Glock 17. That sucker feels like a two by four in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> the good old Glock. <laughs> I can tell you yeah. what I have. My full size nine millimeters, a uh, Smith and Wesson M and P 2.0. That's got a five inch barrel. And and if you go from shooting your carry pistol, which I have plenty of those, but you go from shooting that to the, to your full size like that with a five inch barrel, you feel like a Jedi, like you can't miss anything. It's, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. So, that yeah, that would like be my it. suggestion to try that one out if he has it for sure. So I'm I'll tell you what, we're, we're, coming up on, uh, we're coming up on a break here, Rick. Can you stick around for another 10 or you got to go? I, I can do one more 10. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right we got uh, U.S. Senate candidate Rick Becker with us. Stick around. We're going to continue the conversation the other side of the break. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Mandan Sporting Goods. Dvorak Motors, we're your family for a lifetime. Big boy, just get in line. It moves fast. Hit Inc. Independence, dignity, respect. Hit Inc. Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Super Talk 1270, Talk of the Town, Gun Day Monday. Clayton Peterson down Morristown, and Mr. Rick Becker on the line as a special guest here for about another five, six minutes. You guys still with me? Yep. And four. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, so Rick, I got a question for you. Well, it's kind of a comment question kind of thing. Since you were a big part of getting constitutional carry passed in New York, um, as you know, the recent case in the Supreme Court, their New York pistol and rifle versus Bruin, it kind of knocked down um, that you can't carry a gun in public. And, and now New York's going, I think Kathy Hochul's their governor. They're, they're just going berserk over this and trying to make everything a, a sensitive zone as as uh, justice thomas said you can do and there, of course there's going to be chaos in the streets and gunfights and i mean could you uh, there's people here that said that when i was passing i remember but i mean could you, could you tell us if <laughs> that ever right. happens well yeah that, i mean that's exactly what they said uh and the argument they made uh to me when when i was trying to get my bill passed for constitutional carry and that was that it was going to be the wild west here in north dakota Mm-hmm. that we are going to lose uh, all of the retail business from the Canadians who would look at us as <laughs> as uh, backwards Neanderthals because we've done such a stupid thing, um, and that uh, gun deaths would go up, suicides would go up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. obviously all turned out to be false, as we knew it would be. Um, and I think it's it's that's been borne out over and over and over. You know, there's been over the last 10 years, such a renewed interest in, in second amendment rights for the state with more states passing constitutional carry with more states, uh, decreasing, uh, restrictions. And yet we're not seeing, uh, what they're, what they're, uh, we're warning us about dire warnings. I mean, if anything, what we should be seeing of course is, is, uh, decreased crime. 
Right. Uh, I mean, you know, that, there is a reason why most of these uh, shootings occur in gun free zones. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got to I got to interrupt you. Do you want? We got a caller. You want to take a phone call, Rick? Sure. Okay. Sure. All right, caller, are you there? Yeah, this is Marty from Stewartsville. I can't tell you how happy I am that Rick is running. But I, I just have my concerns. You know, we've had these uh, representatives that we've elected and sent to Washington, D.C., and they continually ignore the Constitution. Um, you know, we're talking about the IRS and the, the ATF and, and all these um, uh, unconstitutional organizations that we are basically slaves to and and rick i just want to know because i think that you're about one of the only people i mean i know your your uh constitutional voting record is is uh better than anybody but how how do you plan on fighting those people in washington um that continually accept this stuff that's definitely unconstitutional yeah there's a you know what? It, it, you're exactly right. I mean, there are very few of us that really uh, adhere to a constitutionalist approach. Um, there are a couple out there already in D.C. Uh, there's no way we're going to get, say, a majority of elected officials to be to be people who respect the Constitution. But the beautiful thing is, you don't need a majority. You just need a a steadfast small group because this. It, there's a, there's a lot of reasons, but but having one or two isn't enough. But you start getting six, eight, ten, and suddenly they form a critical mass where other people join on and they recognize the the importance of it. And I think you're going to see that in the North Dakota Senate this year. So for my my prediction is that the North Dakota Senate will be much much more conservative. Uh, than they have been for I don't know how long. In fact, even more conservative than the House, which is the opposite. But you get folks out there like uh, Senator uh, Lee and Senator uh, Paul, Rand Paul, Mike yep. Lee. Yep. Uh, they're constitutionalists, and they it sometimes, especially in the Senate, only takes one guy to put a wrench in in the whole works, and it, when they're going to do something unconstitutional. You know what and I like. So you know. Go ahead. You know what I like about those two guys, Rick, and I think you're going to be a man like that. You will actually come out on a regular basis and call people out and confront it instead of using some PC language. And, and I, I want somebody more confrontational in there. I mean, I'm not saying go up and punch somebody in the nose, but you got to call these people out. And I mean, that even includes your own party when they're being soft. Bingo. Well, exactly, man. Now, so, so the beautiful thing is, you know, people say, well, how can we know what you're going to do? And all I can say is, well, I, I guess you don't really, but you've got. 10 years of me being in the state legislature. People know what my approach is. People know yep. the, the level of integrity uh, of respecting the constitution, of keeping my word, of holding others accountable, of even more so holding myself accountable. 10 years of that. And I mean, there is a reason why I'm a pariah in the Republican Party, because I'm more disappointed in the Republicans than I am in the Democrats, because the Democrats tell me the crap they're going to do. Right. I can expect it from them. What I don't like is someone who says, well, here's here's what I stand for, but then they do the opposite. Well, so, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm there all the way, man. That's awesome. And what, what, what you're to expand a little more on the state party, I mean, all of these pro-Second Amendment bills here, there shouldn't have been one Republican that voted against that. Not one, but there was in both yep. in both chambers. And that that's the kind of stuff, sure you know, when, when, they, when they say... Um, you know, we're, we're the right wing radicals of the party and don't get along. <laughs> we're not, you, you guys are floating the other direction. We're just sticking to the principles of it here. You know, it's, well, not only that, yeah. we're Isn't following that the actual party platform. Right. Just by following the platform, just by sticking to the constitution in many people's eyes, or at least in some, that makes you a radical. Mm. You know, that just yeah. shows how far we've veered off course. Yeah, it is. It is sad. You well, know, I Rick, tell you what, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to go to our next break here, Rick. I uh, really appreciate you coming on. It was a good conversation. Uh, hopefully, Clay and I can get you on uh, Guns in the 701 live stream coming up here yeah. one of these Wednesdays, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I think we should be able to do that. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me on. Anytime. I appreciate it. Anytime. Awesome. And thank you, Marty, Thanks, for Rick. calling in. Appreciate you. 
So, all right, this is uh, Talk of the Town, Gun Day Monday, and uh, Mandan Sporting Goods Studios here. Hang with us. Uh, Play and I'll finish off the last half hour after the break. I'm Rick Becker. I'm a conservative Republican and I'm running for the United States Senate. The media and political establishment call me ultra-conservative or far-right because all Republicans use the word conservative when they campaign, but very few are consistent and principled once elected. And that's what sets me apart. Aside from being a part-time citizen legislator, I have spent my entire life in the private sector. I've opened and operated several businesses which created many jobs and contributed to our vibrant economy. I represent the exact opposite of a career politician. I represent the good people of North Dakota who believe that with hard work and planning, we can build a better life for ourselves and our children. First elected to the legislature in 2012, I have been hammering away at the status quo for 10 years. While many claim to be conservative, my actions have always backed up my words. Numerous rankings consistently place me in the 90 to 100 percent range for conservative and pro-liberty votes. In fact, just this month I was awarded the only 100 percent rating in North Dakota by the American Conservative Union. I have many personal legislative successes including constitutional carry, civil asset forfeiture reform, confidential informant reform, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, warrant requirements for drone surveillance, and most recently, the prohibition of vaccine passports in the state of North Dakota. I've also provided important assistance in the causes of school choice, pro-life legislation, criminal justice reform, lowering the income tax, and even eliminating the property tax. I am an outspoken critic of do-nothing politicians in the legislature and the Republican Party, especially over the runaway spending during the last decade, both in North Dakota and in Washington. The way I see it, we can't expect our leaders to be the best they can be if we are afraid to critique or challenge them. This approach is what we desperately need in Washington, D.C. Principled conservatives who will do what's right regardless of whether it's politically safe. It is that simple. This is the time in which we must make a choice, either friendly and quiet or bold and passionate. Either go along to get along or you take a stand for freedom. Either protecting a political career or protecting liberty and independence for all Americans. In your heart, you've already made the choice. You know what you want, what we need, what America needs. We need hard-working, passionate fighters. We need a bold, relentless advocate for the people of North Dakota, a leader who will work well with others, but without compromising on the values that matter most. Patriots know what the right choice is. You know what the right choice is. Now I need you to put that knowledge into action. I urge you to fight for liberty, to fight for the people of North Dakota, and to support me in becoming your next United States Senator. I invite you to be part of the change that is coming. Together, we will turn our country around. I'm Rick Becker, running for U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Gun Day Monday, 1270 Super Talk. J.D. Brecht here, a.k.a. Buck Muley, Clayton Peterson. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Going good. You know, I All think right. Buck knows Sturm over there, too, don't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And Peterson M. Clay, he knows them. <laughs> They're all good guys. They hang around that guns in the seven hundred one. You know, it's the good dudes. <laughs> you know, I gotta tell, I gotta bring something up though. Yep. You know, there's a couple things that we that I wanted to talk about here, possibly here before the, the end of the show. But absolutely, does anybody know other than me and you and a few handful of other people like uh, Trent Luce and a few the Man Parade? <laughs> yeah, bring that up for sure. Go so, for it. And I don't have a lot of information. I, I suppose I better get a hold of some of those guys and see what this is all about. But I know yeah. it's taking place October 10th, 
which is Columbus Day. And uh, it's going to be in Mandan, from what I understand. And it's just a, it's, I, I think it started out with Trent and a few others talking about this on some other shows around uh, that are going out there. And I think even mm-hmm. Rick up there, uh, Jensen up there, is, yep. was talking about it with him. So, I mean, I guess I, I got to encourage everybody to get out there and celebrate being a man. And I think that's what that's Absolutely. all about. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's I know we're gonna have a, we're gonna have something in there for guns in the seven hundred one. Yep. So, oh, we'll yeah. get more information on that. Yeah, so yeah, I think we're probably gonna have side by side rolling through there with the, with the you know kind of pushing <laughs> our label there a little bit. So and just hey, just little being patriotic. in the man parade is gonna be a great thing. A little patriotic music. Probably have to have yeah. a few of them oh, scary yeah, firearms out there. Getting a yeah. getting a little soundtrack going for that. <laughs> so i'm going to talk a little more about we we're talking to rick about the concealed carry you know how, and how, how all these unfounded fears and they say the same thing every time and I, I maybe brought this up on the show once before and we were filling in but it always sticks in my head that you know um, ed schaefer was on another show and he and he and he's kind of was saying the same thing and well what if kid goes to a party and he finds a, a gun in the sofa and <laughs> Yeah. I know I called him to talk about it. To his credit, we did have a discussion about it. But I mean, I, you know, you think somebody's a well, he's a conservative, but boy, you'd think he'd have been a little more commonsensical about it because every single state that it that that this has happened, constitutional carry or that it, you know they it it, uh, it, it doesn't go the down. way they think. Yeah, and now it goes in, down. People's lives are saved. I mean, we see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's. It, I don't know how many times the statistic has to be said, but it's it's proven that people that actually are concealed carry people are are safer than even even the ones who do go through the training are safer than the police actually. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, think about it now. You, like where I live, I'm very rural down here. If I was mm-hmm. to call for help and call nine one one, a will it even go through? B that sheriff is located over in Fort Yates, uh, North Dakota. And mm-hmm. that's about a hundred mile drive here. So even if he breaks the speed limit in a in a pursuit to get over there quickly, we're forty five minutes to an hour, guys. I don't have yeah. time to wait for law enforcement, nor should I have to. Um, that's why the founders formed this country the way they did. We were supposed to be able to take care of ourselves, self preservation, protect ourselves, and you know that's when I testified last year, and Rick was in that. Uh, you know, well, you were there too, Jamie, me and Marty mm-hmm. and you and several other people. We testified on the stand your ground and uh, we got yep. it through and it's going to and it's probably going to be one of the number one things eventually that will ensure our own self-protection. We do not have a duty to retreat anymore, nor should you. And yeah. uh, when I got I mean, challenged that's... by that, I kind of laid it. I laid that gal out pretty good, I thought, <laughs> uh, you know, in testimony. Well, and we were talking about weak Republicans. There was a few of them in that committee that didn't want to hear hear that part Absolutely. about it, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and I, uh, I, and I, they don't follow the platform. Well, you look at the party platform in the state. Boom! It's right there. It talks mm-hmm. about how we're supposed to protect and and enshrine the Second Amendment. Essentially, I mean, it's it's not even a mm-hmm. question. But yet, you got guys that are, as you like to call them, fuds on it yeah, right? in the Republican in Party. <laughs> there is plenty of fuds in there. If you don't know what that is, look it up on the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> oh, yeah, like in New York, too, they're doing, um, they want people, they want to go, they want to make it, because the, the the court case didn't, you can still have people get a, a carry permit, but you can't deny them. But so now what these blue states are doing is they're they're making them go, you know, give the their whole social media uh, yep. platforms they want they want to go through that with a fine tooth comb and i'll promise you they will find an excuse to say you aren't you aren't level-headed enough or something to be a to be able to carry a gun around you and know that's I'm, what happens uh on constant or on permits I, i've never been a big uh, big guy for permits for my rights I, I shouldn't have to give my right to the government so they can sell it back to me and, and uh, infringe mm-hmm. on it but you look at new york or some of these others this is the difference between may issue and shall issue. You mm-hmm. know, New York was even worse. Basically, you had to have a really good reason. I mean, a really good yeah, reason. You, or a millionaire with connections. Right, you know. or, or pay to play. They, that seems to yeah. be the the favorite thing with, with Democrats. But well, you got I can tell the you. Narrow, right? 
Go ahead, Clayton. Oh, I, was, I can tell you right now, South Dakota is a shall or is a uh, shall issue. Meaning, if you go in there and you pass your background check, you will get your permit. You pay your fifteen or twenty bucks, whatever it is, down there now, and it's a done deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, they passed constitutional carry, which is a stronger bill that went through than than what North Dakota even has. Which one, which I worked on with the NRA with uh, uh, Senator Nelson. Uh, he's from down that Mitchell area. And uh, of course, I retired before we got it through. We didn't. We weren't successful that first time, but he carried the carried the bill again, and it went through. And uh, it's a great bill. Anybody in the state of South Dakota, resident or non-resident, as long as they're able to carry, they may carry without a permit. Now it's just like the Wyoming bill. Unfortunately, in North Dakota, and we, and we can change that eventually. It's only for residents only, and I've never understood that. If, if a right does not end at the border, period. Right. Well, I remember when um, President Trump first got elected, and then they were taught he's he was said he was all for national reciprocity. Well, it never happened, and I'll tell you why. Or Clay can shortly, but that people still sit here and dog on Trump, saying he never got that passed, and he had. Eh, guess what? He didn't have all the votes he needed. You know, no, Mitch fact, McConnell didn't even bring it up for a vote. And but, not but only Trump that, it. Paul Ryan in the House actually fought it. Yeah, I forgot about I him. Mean, yeah, he had. The Senate and the House, we had, we controlled it, and we had the White House. All they had to do, he kept saying, "Send me the bill, I'll sign it," and they never yeah. did. They, they we had yeah. Republicans in there who claimed that they were Second Amendment supporters, mm-hmm. they were NRA endorsed politicians, and yeah. would not sign or would not get a bill to the president to sign. That wasn't a, an error on on Trump's part. No, that was absolutely the Rhino Republicans in the House and the Senate. Yep. Yep. It was. And then, you know, sticking with Trump a little bit more here. Um, you know, he said some things, of course we had the bump stock thing, which I know we oh, talked about that. that discussion, yeah. Bit. yeah. But, but, and then I know there was a, I think in Virginia, remember when the guy went into the office building or whatever with the handgun and he had the suppressor on it. And, and, um, of course they, they said they could still hear it. They're not silent. I mean, they, right. it, but, but Trump said, well, maybe that's something we need to look at. And uh, boy, they jumped down his throat about that right away again. I mean, you got to realize the guy has to say something like that every now and then. And he and he wasn't like well, he was like like Rick said. He's still being more pro gun. I mean, I don't know how he get more pro gun than he is, but I, well, I, mean, I think Trump, it comes Trump down to progress on guns. Um, I think like, Trump and Rick probably mirror each other as far as to their actual experience of, of shooting. You know, yeah. Rick was talking about now he's looking for a different handgun or, you know, different uh, guns and firearms, which I'm glad that's I hope he does go check that out because Nick can really help him out over there. But yeah, the big thing is, is you and I, we've shot about everything and we know mm-hmm. what we like. We know what we don't like. I've been doing I mean, I've been shooting since I was 16 years old and uh, I got a lot of experience. And you know what? I learned something new every day. Well, you take a guy like Trump, he might not have even known what the uh, what a suppressor i mean he probably had the idea what it did but right. didn't know what it really did and really how it was an insignificant part and it really is just something to suppress noise to help you with your hearing i mean really that's the idea behind them so you don't have yeah. that big loud bang and which you know, i can tell you years of not shooting with ear hear for hearing protection because i was stupid as a young yep. kid now i yeah. have hearing problems and it takes one shot. You get next to something with a with a with a muzzle break or a ported barrel, and it's you know a larger caliber, even a smaller one, not a twenty two. But I mean, so I mean that that'll ruin your hearing for the rest of your life. You'll you know. Oh yeah. Well, and, if you even shoot a twenty two, especially in an, in an indoor range, which would be dumb oh, yeah, indoor, without hearing protection, yeah. but yeah. even outside, yeah. repetitively in a range that's kind of enclosed, you know, with berms, that constant decibel, just boom, 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 yep. will actually give you hearing loss. You bet. Well, Clay, I'll tell you what, we're coming up on our last break here. So we're going to take that. And then uh, after that, we're going to come back and Clay and I will close out the show. Gun Day Monday. Mandan Sporting Goods, sponsor of the show. Get over there and support Brandon. He's supporting your rights. We'll see you guys after the break. Talk of the Town, brought to you by Mandan Sporting Goods. Dvorak Motors, we're your family for a lifetime. Big boy, just get in line. It moves fast. Hit Inc. Independence, dignity, respect. 
Hit Inc. Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jamie here with my buddy Clay Peterson. Talk of the Hanging Town out on the border. Yeah, <laughs> make the borders in order. In these <laughs> <laughs> Man, we don't even have a wall, but it is heavily defended. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well, we're coming to see you from. We got uh, Man Down Sporting Goods sponsored studio here this morning. So thanks again to Brandon for doing that. It's awesome. So what do we got, Clay? We got about. Yes, he is. We got about five, six minutes here. You got you got anything you want to hit on here? Well, yeah. You know, if, if, for those of you who will be watching this uh, after we upload it on Guns in the 701, I want to talk a little bit about high school trap leagues, guys. I mean, right now, I bet a lot of people don't even realize we have even in North Dakota, the National High School Trap League uh, in several schools. So um, so they've had a lot of success here. I was just reading a story here. That would have been, I believe it was last year. I don't have this year's results yet, but the Coyote Clay Target uh, League finished number one in trap sporting clays and five stand. I believe they originate out of Williston. They have the competition over there in Horace, North Dakota. And I mean, and I bet there was just a bleep and hardly heard anything about it. I mean, here's a lot of kids who get involved. They're, they're shooting, having a great time, learning skills that they'll carry with them forever. And uh, we're not talking about it, which is unfortunate. Well, you know what? Um, sounds like a good topic we can do if we ever fill in again or on a film. Oh, absolutely. Have somebody I on think, from that. I think we absolutely need to try and get somebody on. Also, guys, uh, North Dakota Game and Fish actually has grants um they got grants for north for shooting ranges those are due october 1st um this year guys I, you can use them for a variety of things on on ranges they also have high school trap league grants and those are going to be available they're up to a thousand dollars with a 75 25 split and when i was looking at that information i didn't see there was a deadline for that so if you have a high school and you want to start a league or you have a league or you might need a little help Guys, I, I got to say, you got to go get on the uh, NDGF and check out that because I think they really can help you out and get you a little money to help out with your program. I, I just can't say enough about that as far as keeping those leagues going. We used to have junior rifle clubs in schools, and, of course, they did away with them. So now we have this going on, and I think that's a great a great thing to get them kids involved. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's future. I mean, like – Hey, we were talking earlier with Rick. I, I, I didn't get into guns because I was, you know, shooting. Shooting was fun, but I was a hunter when I was, you know, well, heck, I was out with the BB gun walking around with my, <laughs> with my, with my grandparents and my parents and my uncles. And, you know, I just kind of graduated the 22. And I mean, that, that gets them into, it gets you into to guns. And then, you know, the older you get, uh, <clears throat> just tell an ultra mega producer here on the break that, you know, that's kind of <laughs> how I got, I never was into heavy politics until the year 2000, really. And I was 30 years old, you know. Well, but, yeah. that, that happened a lot. Um, I have I have followed politics most of my life, been uh, involved all the way back in the high school, but I didn't shoot. You'll love this. I didn't grow up with uh, with parents that hunted or shot. My grandpa mm -hmm. did a little bit of it when I go out to the ranch, but for the most part, I didn't hunt or shoot. And I, I always tell people that I didn't really pick up a firearm until I was 16 years old. And it shocks people because, well, you know me how I am. <laughs> I yep. mean... Uh, I love yeah. firearms. I love the Second Amendment, and I love to hunt and fish. And I didn't grow up doing all that. But one of my good buddies' dads, he invited me to come along one time, and I've been hooked ever since. And he had me actually shoot a three fifty seven the first time. <laughs> now he did Ooh. have thirty eight loads in it, but Ooh, he was, I, yeah, I I was hooked. I was like, oh, this is just too cool. How did I not know about this before? <laughs> So, well, you're not a little guy, so you can handle a 38. Yeah, I could handle it. And I, I always tell people, <laughs> I am the example of take somebody shooting, take them hunting, take them, take them, uh, especially mm -hmm. if you see that their parents don't do it, because you will create somebody who then will have an appreciation and a love for it. Also, that will probably resonate the protection of our rights, because that's what happens if you really love it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, my, well, one of my grandparents, I hunted and 
you know, they were heavy outdoor. My grandpa and his, and my grandma were both outdoorsmen, but yeah, mm-hmm. you know, they were, they were old school Democrats. They, you know, you <laughs> oh, talk yeah. to them and you think they're conservatives, but I, you know, my, my uncle did tell me my grandpa was, he didn't like AR-15s, but you know, whatever. Whatever. It's, uh, first deer I ever shot was with this 222 Savage Model 10. I still got it at home. Or, it's, awesome. Uh, and yeah. those heirloom guns, I've got a bunch of my grandfathers and I, are they worth a lot? Uh, money what wise no but the value they have is beyond that and right. someday i hope to pass them on to my kids um yep of course my kids <laughs> they're gonna get quite a collection as you know <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah good but that's good i have, and i have passed this now to my kids i mean my youngest just turned 13 my oldest will turn 16 but they've been shooting for i don't know mm-hmm. since they were old enough to do it and yeah. uh, some of the videos I've posted of my youngest out there, I mean, he can handle a Caltech PMR like nobody's Absolutely. business. <laughs> so I, All right, I'm very Peyton. proud of him. Me too. You got some good boys there for sure. That was a All good right. show today. Gun Day Monday, Clayton Peterson, myself, JD, Clay, why don't you, um, why don't you give us a little plug here for the free one for oh, Wednesday? Yeah, Guns of the 701 show coming up Wednesday, 6 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Central. I imagine we're going to touch on some of this stuff. I want to talk a little bit about Rick's run. Uh, He is such a Second Amendment supporter. And I think we have to have a a little review of your range uh, time. this Absolutely. Axel and I did one yesterday out of his place. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And got a message from my mom, my buddy Brax. Appreciate you guys. Love you, Mom. Um, Clay and I will be out. Great filling in today. Thanks, Randy. You did a great job yourself. We'll see you, Clayton. Talk to you soon. Yep.